Hi everybody and thank you for joining us here for another video on electronic science. So today we're going to be trying to build a Tesla coil. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here before we get started with this video. So elephant in the room here I haven't uploaded in quite some time, a little over four months in fact. That is because, you know, school, and then I had a lot of summer vacations to go on, and then summer projects, and also this Tesla coil has taken me about three months to actually build. So uh, hopefully now that all that stuff is done with, uh, our upload schedule will become a little bit more consistent here on Electronic Science. So thank you guys for sticking with me through that time, and uh, yeah, let's get back to the video now. Alright, hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to make a Tesla coil. More specifically, this Tesla coil design is uh, called a Slayer Exciter. And uh, so there's a lot of controversy on the internet on whether or not a Slayer Exciter is actually a Tesla coil. And if you do some research, believe it or not, a Slayer Exciter is just a different version of a solid state Tesla coil. And so in today's video, you're going to need a couple of different components and uh, big pieces of machinery will come. First off, you're going to need a secondary coil. Now my secondary coil has, I calculated around just over a thousand turns of 28 gauge magnet wire. And I'll show you guys how thin that is in just a second. And over here on the bottom, you can see in the bottom of the frame here, you're going to need something called a primary coil. Now the primary coil is a lot less turns than your secondary coil and is uh, vital to actually making your test coil work. Now the primary coil is a, uh, a lot thicker wire. I'm actually using 12 gauge wire. You can pick this up at your local Home Depot or hardware store and home improvement store uh, for pretty cheap. Uh, that's usually the type of wiring that you use to wire in outlets and uh, hardwired in appliances in your home, at least in North America. Now you can use thicker or thinner uh, primary coil wire, but you don't want to go too thin because uh, your primary coil won't work too good. Next, you're going to need one of these TIP31C NPN transistors. And last but not least, you're going to need a 47 kilo ohm resistor. Now, the good thing with Slayer circuits is they're pretty flexible. So you can use a resistor value that's a little bit more or a little bit less than 47 kilo ohms, as long as it's within the ballpark. Here is the schematic of the test coil we're going to be building in today's video. Now, a quick disclaimer before we start this video. Please do not try this project if you don't have at least a year of electronics experience. Because if you, uh, if you don't and you don't know what you're doing, you could probably die or at least get exposed to a ton of EM radiation. This Tesla coil puts out very high voltage and very high frequency electricity into the air around you. So this can also interfere with uh, electronic devices like phones or smartwatches. So while the Tesla coil is live and in operation, please make sure you set those aside at least 10 feet away from your Tesla coil. And again, please do not try this uh, uh, experiment if you do not have uh, at least some electronic experience or you'll probably die or at least get exposed to a ton of electromagnetic radiation. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started with building this Tesla coil. So if you're going to want a Tesla coil of any kind, you're going to need a secondary coil. Now during my Tesla coil experimenting, I've made two different secondary coils. In today's video, we're going to be using this secondary coil over here. This secondary coil has around 500 turns and I burnt one of the windings over here on it while I was trying to build a spark app version of this Tesla coil. I'll get into why that didn't work out very good for me. You can kind of see I taped it over there. Now this secondary coil over here, like I mentioned, has around a thousand turns of 28 gauge enameled magnet wire. Now make sure your wire is enameled. Is if these windings short out while the Tesla coil is in operation, it won't work too good. In fact, you might even start a fire. And then, if you want a Tesla coil of any kind, you're also going to need a primary coil. Now, primary coils um, can be many different shapes and many different sizes. Typically, with Slayer exciters, they're usually wound in a cylinder shape uh, towards the bottom of the Tesla coil. And I believe I have around six turns of primary on my Tesla coil. Now, a good thing to start off with uh, building Tesla coils, you're going to want to build a primary coil that has way too many turns. More than enough turns, I should say. This way, you can try different uh, points. You could uh, put your wire in different points of it and uh, see what resonates great with your secondary coil. This is what you call tuning the Tesla coil. 
My Tesla coil specifically likes around six turns of primary and around a thousand turns of secondary. Now the more turns of secondary, the more powerful your Tesla coil will be. This is basically acting like a transformer. Now a step up transformer, as we all know, the more turns of secondary you have, the higher voltage you're going to get on it. Well this basically works the same with Tesla coils. The more secondary turns you have, the more electricity and the more radiated energy you're going to get out of it. So for example, if I were to use this secondary coil over here, I'd only maybe be able to turn on a bulb within a few inches. But this one, I could turn a bulb on from over a foot away. So yeah, definitely makes a big difference with how many turns of secondary you have. Now a good thing to have on your Tesla coil is a top load. My top load is actually just a piece from a bell, an elevator bell that I got a while back. Now what the top load does is it increases the capacitance on your secondary coil side and will allow the voltage to build up rather than just bleed out of the wire. And it will actually radiate more energy rather than just having an arc come out of the top. Now a top load isn't required for building a test coil, but it does make things a little bit more powerful and it will make things a little bit more arcier when you actually put a ground wire up to the top load. So keep that in mind while building your test coil. In today's video we're going to be using the top load, but uh, eventually I'll take it off for you guys and show you what the test coil does without a top load. Right here I have the uh, spool of wire that I use to uh, wind the uh, Tesla coil here. This is 26 gauge enameled magnet wire. My camera's having a lot of trouble picking it up, but you can see this stuff is super thin. You can go all the way up to basically 38 gauge magnet wire. But what I find best is anywhere between 20 and 30 gauge magnet wire should work pretty good for building your Tesla coil. Here is the uh, other wire that I used to wire my other secondary coil. This is actually 24 gauge enameled magnet wire. It's actually noticeably thicker as my camera is not having a hard time picking it up. Now when I started to build this test coil a few months back, I actually wanted to build the spark gap version of it. And that utilized one of these uh, high voltage flyback DC transformers in a ZVS circuit right here. I wound up giving and buying one of these ZVS uh, drivers off of Amazon only because I didn't have the parts to actually build one and uh, I was a little too lazy to buy the parts and actually design my own. But if you guys continue to remind me, I'll hopefully design one of my own ZVS drivers for induction heating and also flyback transformer high voltage at a later date. That actually didn't work too good as um, I uh, didn't have enough insulation to actually block my secondary coil and what would happen is the primary coil would arc back into the secondary coil and that would only have to happen a couple of times before you completely destroy the windings on your secondary coil and have to rewind it. It also utilized all these capacitors in parallel to uh, get that spark on the spark gap. That's why that didn't work. Here's some video that I took on my phone from about a month ago and uh, the monstrosity that I had when it was a spark gap version of the Tesla coil. Now down over here we have one of our TIP31C transistors over here. Now transistors are vital to building a test coil because Tesla coils run off of alternating current. Now the thing that doesn't make sense is we're going to be feeding this anywhere between 12 and 24 volts of DC. Now what this transistor is doing is it's oscillating back and forth like this, making a square wave signal to the primary coil of the Tesla coil. Now when current flows through the primary coil, it creates a magnetic field around the primary coil itself and the secondary coil. Now when the transistor switches off that magnetic field collapses and it basically pushes a very high voltage through the secondary coil. Now the more times you do this, the more powerful your test coil will be. That's why there's something called a resonant frequency. The good thing about slur exciters is we don't really need to worry about the resonant frequency of our Tesla coil. Reason being is because this circuit works based off of feedback from the secondary coil. So we actually don't need to calculate our resonant frequency of our Tesla coil through Java TC or any sort of calculator. The transistor is going to do that all for us. So I'm not going to get into resonance in today's video. Now a quick note before we begin building this Tesla coil. In today's video, I'm going to be running my test coil off of a 12 volt drill battery. Reason being is because right over here, I have my 12 volt uh, switching power supply. Now, switching power supplies create a lot of electrical interference and a lot of electrical noise, which test coils are very sensitive to that. 
while I was doing testing with this test coil, I was actually running it off of this power supply. But what would happen is, as soon as I switched it down, my transistor would die. That was because of the electrical noise coming off of my switching power supply. So if you have a linear power supply with a big bulky transformer in there, that'll likely work better than a switching power supply. Definitely keep that in mind if you are building a Tesla coil. Batteries don't create any sort of electrical noise and put out the smooth DC current. This Tesla coil in the Slayer Excited Circuit is designed to work around 12 to 24 volts. Today's video we're going to be running it off of 12 volts because I don't have a heat sink for my transistor. You're not going to want to run this uh, Slayer Exciter for too long. Uh, without your transistor being on a heat sink or else it'll heat up and begin to burn. Alrighty then everybody, so let's get to building this test coil. So first you're going to need your TIP31C NPN transistor. And you're going to want to plug that in anywhere on your breadboard. Next you're going to need some jumper wires. Now TIP31C transistors, their pinout is slightly different from normal NPN transistors. So starting off with uh, your TIP31C, this pin over here, if you're looking at it this way, this is going to be your base. The middle pin over here is going to be your collector. And the last pin over here is going to be your emitter. Your emitter you're going to want to connect to ground. So we're going to use that just by doing a jump wire and connecting it to the negative rail on your breadboard. Next, you're going to want to connect some uh, wires to your primary coil. As you can see, I'm using some very thin wire and I've just tied it onto my uh, primary coil there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run these little pieces of wire over to the breadboard and into our transistor. So to clarify what I've done here, I've actually clipped one of the uh, windings uh, of wire coming off the primary coil going into one side of the breadboard and then I have one much higher than it over here on the top of it that runs into another part of the transistor. Now, as you can see, I'm actually not using this bottom winding over here on the primary coil. That is because I only need six instead of seven turns. So if you want to uh, build this, what you can do is you can clip it on different points and uh, figure out how many turns works the best for you. Anything that is not connected to the wire will not function at all in your Tesla coil circuit. Next, you're going to want to take one of those wires coming off of your primary coil and connect it to the middle pin of your TIP31C. After that, you're going to take the other wire coming off of the primary side and you're going to connect it to the positive rail of your breadboard. Now you're going to take your resistor and you're going to connect it from the base of the transistor to the positive rail. Last, what you're going to do is tie a jumper wire to the bottom winding of your secondary coil. This isn't your primary coil, this is the bottom wire coming off of your secondary coil. Make sure you leave room on both ends. You're going to tie a wire up to that and you're going to connect your secondary coil to the base of your transistor. Now your Slayer Exciter circuit should be ready. Now all you need to do is connect your uh, battery, your power supply, up to the positive and negative rails of your breadboard. Over here I've connected a switch uh, from a wall in between the positive side of the battery into the breadboard. This way I can control the uh, on and off of the Slayer Exciter through a switch rather than unplugging and plugging it back in. And the negative side is just directly connected to the breadboard. As you can see when I first flip the switch on, the circuit doesn't work. If that is the case, immediately turn off your circuit. This is normal. Your uh, primary and secondary coils need to have the electricity going through them at the exact same direction. Let me explain. Now, when building a Tesla coil, as we mentioned, you're going to have a primary coil and a much larger secondary coil. Now, the current in the primary coil needs to flow in the same direction in which the secondary coil was wound. If that doesn't happen and the current is flowing in the opposite direction, they won't resonate at all. So in order to fix this, you just need to reverse the polarity with the two wires coming out of the primary coil. So here, all we're going to do is take the wire coming out of the positive rail, and we're going to put that and swap it with the one that's in the middle of the transistor. Alright, let's dim the lights. Let's flip on the switch and see what happens. First grab any old uh, fluorescent or neon light bulb, flip the switch and hold it up to it. Amazing, isn't it? 
Here's something pretty cool. When you run the Tesla coil, and you put a uh, wire up to the top load here, pull an arc off of it. Now here's something cool you could do with your Tesla coil. If you happen to have one of these clear incandescent bulbs over here, as some of you may know, these are filled with argon or in some cases uh, nitrogen gas. This uh, light bulb over here is one of the more common argon backfilled light bulbs. And as we know, low pressure gas under high voltage glows and ionizes and makes some beautiful colors. So if you switch on your Tesla coil here and you actually hold the bulb up to your Tesla coil, you could see that we can get the bulb to actually begin glowing and the argon gas ionizes inside of it and creates some really cool colors. Let's zoom in for you guys. It's hard to convey how bright some of these bulbs can get with the amount of light that's coming into the basement right now through the windows. But really, this Tesla coil is a whole lot of fun. You could turn on multiple light bulbs at once in your hand with this. Now, this Tesla coil, because it's a Slayer Exciter, it's totally safe to touch the arcs. As you may have noticed, I was actually using that wire and holding it. The reason why is because um, the electricity coming out of this Tesla coil is very high frequency. And due to something called the conductor skin effect, the electricity passes around the outer shell of a conductor. In your case, the outer shell of your skin. and doesn't actually mess with your nerves. and doesn't go through your heart. So this is completely safe to touch, and you won't die due to electric shock. However, the arc is very hot, and you can easily get third-degree burn within seconds so that's why I definitely suggest if you do want to touch these arcs touch it with a wire this way you won't get burnt here's something cool turn it on show your friends definitely something fun to play with can't get enough of this Now over here we have the test coil without the top load connected. And it's hard to make it out, but you can see the thin piece of wire coming out of the top over here. Now when we turn it on, it's hard to make it out, but there is a, a small little corona discharge coming off of the end of it. And when I uh, bring my wire close to it here, I can arc it and complete the circuit through ground on me. But you can notice how the arc is much shorter, because there isn't that capacitance from the uh, top load, and that actually makes the total radiated energy less and actually your Tesla coil will be less powerful without a top load but in this mode it continuously arcs and makes a little bit more of a flame effect so uh, it's personal preference whatever you think is more cool Alrighty then everybody, that's going to wrap up today's video here on Electronic Science. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on this video and also subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy our content. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this project or have any video ideas for the future. Again guys, thank you guys for watching. Sorry for the inconsistent upload schedule. I should be getting better with that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye everybody.